So this stuff here, this is easy. This will be on your test. This will be a matching section. I will have the words. I will have the definitions. And you just have to match them. So, and some of these words you actually should recognize if you paid attention on the lab that you did um, on meiosis where you did the, the karyotype and all of that. Some of these words were in that lab as well. So anytime the chromosome number is abnormal, extra chromosomes, missing chromosomes, that's called being aneuploid. So our aneuploidy is extra or missing chromosomes. Just the, the number is wrong. Polyploid and trisomy. People are going to mess this up on the test because they always do. Polyploid is where there's an entire extra set of chromosomes. Not an extra chromosome, but literally having, instead of um, two copies of each chromosome, there's three copies of each chromosome or four copies of each chromosome. We do not really see this in animals. A person cannot survive. I don't know of any mammal that could survive with a whole extra set of chromosomes. But it is extremely common in plants. And as a matter of fact, that's where we get a lot of the plants that you see um, that, are, that have like really big fruits. Um, like I'll show you really quick an example. So like if you've ever bought at the store these really big like clamshell strawberries, those are polyploid. They have extra sets of chromosomes. It's not a GMO. It's not a human-made thing. It's actually something that can occur in nature in certain plants. So if you've ever also seen like those giant pumpkin contests, you know, where they try to make the biggest, probably those are polyploid also. So in plants, it's very common to have entire extra sets of chromosomes, 3N, 4N, instead of 2N. But it is not common in animals. I don't know. You can probably Google it, but I don't know of any animals that are polyploid that would survive. So don't mix up polyploidy, this one, with trisomy. Because trisomy sounds like three sets of chromosomes. But trisomy is just one extra chromosome giving you three three copies of that one. If a, if a plant had three sets of chromosomes, it would be called triploid. See, like polyploid, triploid. So triploid would be three in, three whole sets of chromosomes. But trisomy is what you call it when there's one extra chromosome. Therefore, for that particular pair, there's three, such as trisomy 21 was Down syndrome. So you had three copies of that chromosome. Yes. So, right. So if, it, if a person was polyploid, like I said, you can't survive that way, then instead of having 46 chromosomes, you would literally have, what's, yeah, 69 chromosomes or, or you know what I mean? That would be three in, like an entire extra set, like in a, in a um, what do you call it, in a karyotype, you'd literally see three of each instead of two. And then monosomy is what you call it when you're missing one. And usually the only one I told you that people can survive with that's monosomy is Turner syndrome. So mono for one because they only have one instead of two, trisomy for three instead of two, and then polyploidy for an entire extra set. So this will be matching. Just know the definitions. Um, these are just some pictures to show you what some of these traits look like. So if anybody ever watches um, NCIS Los Angeles, this lady that's, I don't know, she's like in charge of the... CIS or whatever. She has she has um Turner syndrome. The, these two girls in the middle also have Turner syndrome. Honestly, it's not something you would necessarily pick somebody off the street and recognize. Um, and remember, Turner's is the one that's X zero. Mainly, the things that they typically have in common, they're all very short. Like that lady, she's only like four something. She's really short. Um, they tend to have a broad chest. They tend to have a very wide neck. If you notice, they have really wide necks. But like aside from that, mentally they're fine. And this guy has Kleinfelter syndrome, but again, honestly, he just looks like a guy that's out of shape. <laughs> like, he doesn't necessarily, there's no overt characteristics that you would necessarily even notice. Um, but I did want to show you because people always ask, but what do they look like? So there's some pictures. And this girl has Down syndrome. That one usually we recognize, and that one does cause some mental impairment. But these other two, there's no mental issues at all. Um, you'll see in a minute why Turner's and Kleinfelter's don't have as big of issues as you would think. Uh, what causes extra and missing chromosomes? We already covered this. Non-disjunction. So you know what non-disjunction is. It's where the chromosomes stick together during meiosis. You were already tested on this, but this definition can come up again on this coming test. So make sure that you refresh your memory, um, even though you already went through this before. Um, it can occur during meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. Technically, it can happen during mitosis as well, but it really only matters if we're talking about 
meiosis because you're making sperm and eggs. And this is a, a chart. I don't. I think I told you guys that women, you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. They're just immature. They haven't gone through meiosis yet. So once you hit puberty, the eggs, one every month or whatever, goes through meiosis. This is the incidence of Down syndrome per 1,000 births compared to the mother's age. Um, so because your eggs age with you, notice that after age 35, this really shoots up, which is why 35 is sort of that age where they call it a, a high-risk pregnancy or they're more concerned about a pregnancy. However, despite the fact this looks really scary, keep in mind that at age 50, which would be about here, that's still only 20 babies per 1,000 that have Down syndrome. So yes, the numbers go way up, but it's not like they go up to like 75% of the children born have a problem. It's still not a super high number. Um, so just know the definition of non-disjunction and the difference between if it happens in meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. You already have those notes from a previous chapter. Here's a bigger picture of it. So you should recognize this from two chapters ago. Um, if it happens in meiosis 1 and two chromosomes stick together, all the eggs that are made or sperm or whatever would either have an extra chromosome or these two have a missing. If it doesn't happen until meiosis 2, then it's just the ones that come from this cell one would have an extra and one would have a missing. But that should look familiar. This is not the first time you've seen this picture. Okay, this will also be matching. So you could have disorders, and there's lots of disorders out there, where you have a chromosome abnormality, but you're not, you don't have an entire extra or an entire missing chromosome. So these are all other things that can happen when chromosomes copy themselves. An inversion, a chromosome, actually a piece gets flipped over. The thing is, remember, DNA is read like a book. So imagine taking the page of a book and sort of making it the mirror image instead. You wouldn't be able to read it backwards. So if you flip it, flip a piece of a chromosome, the DNA is going to be backwards, which isn't going to make any sense. A translocation is where a piece of a chromosome breaks off and ends up hooked to a completely non-matching chromosome somewhere else. The person that the translocation happens in might not actually have a problem because they still have the piece of chromosome. It's still there. It's just in the wrong spot. The problem is, if they go to have kids, they might end up with now there being an extra piece um, because you're crossing them with another person. So there, there's, there's issues later on. Deletion, a piece of a chromosome literally gets deleted and is lost. A lot of disorders that you'll look up online are deletion disorders, where literally a piece of a chromosome is missing. So they just don't have those genes. Um, and then a duplication is where there's an extra copy. So let me show you, this is exactly identical to what you're going to have on the test. I'm going to tell you that you're starting with code A, B, C, D, E, F. This is the code on a chromosome, and those are the genes. And then I'm going to give you samples, and I'm going to ask you basically to match what that, what disorder that would be. So what if I start with A, B, C, D, E, F, and after whatever it is happens, I now have just A, B, C, D. What would that be? Yes, whoever said that. That would be a deletion, because you're literally missing E and F. What if at the end of whatever happens, I now have A, B, C, D, E, F, E, F? Now you have a duplication, because you have an extra copy of E and F. So that would be a duplication. All right. How about this one? It becomes A, B, F, E, D, C. What do we, what problem do we have now? This is an inversion because you still have C, D, E, F, but they're backwards. And a translocation would look like this. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, and then J, K added to the end, which are two genes from some other place that don't belong there. All right, that's exactly what you will see. I will tell you you have a starting code, and then I will give you sample mistakes, and you'll match the mistake to what that, what kind of chromosome disorder that would be. So it should be easy, that section. So any questions on, on these abnormalities? Okay. Um, here is uh, this, and, and you can refer to this later if you want to. This is showing the same thing I did. This one's prettier. Mine won't be this pretty. Uh, but it's basically showing the same thing. A deletion, D is missing, a duplication, you have this twice, et cetera. Um, this is just an example. Edward, or I'm sorry, this is Williams syndrome. There's a lot of syndromes out there. 
that are actually deletion disorders, where you're actually missing. So in this case, um, it's chromosome 7, a section of chromosome 7 that's missing, and the children end up with Williams syndrome. And I have to honestly look up online. This is just an example they gave from the book. I know they have a distinctive smile, and I think there's some mental abnormalities and some other things, but there's a lot of, of things, genetic disorders that are syndromes that are those kind of disorders, that it's, it's either a deletion or an insertion, a translocation, that kind of thing. Genomic imprinting is just a definition, but it's kind of weird. Genomic imprinting is where if you get the gene from your mom, your body interprets it differently than if you get it from your dad. It's not a sex-linked trait. It's not carried on the sex chromosomes, but your body um, actually treats it differently depending which parent you got it from. It's not overly common, and it's actually kind of a recent discovery. I would say it's, it kind of falls in the range of epigenetics. Remember epigenetics, like the mother's diet could affect things? Um, this is kind of like epigenetics, too. It turns out that the way that, that males store their DNA is different than females. So if you inherit certain traits from your dad, your body might interpret the DNA differently than if you got it from your mom. Let me show you the example um, of it, which is just really freaky. Um, you do not have to know this example, by the way. Just the definition. And I'll put the words back up if you need them in a second. So I'm going to put the pictures up, and then I'll go back to this. So... This is called Prader-Willi syndrome. People with Prader-Willi syndrome, as far as I know, they do have some mental issues. Um, they, the biggest thing about Prader-Willi is that they feel hungry all the time. Like, literally, they think they're starving. Little children with Prader-Willi syndrome will eat dog food. They'll steal food out of dumpsters. They'll go through the trash can. People have to put padlocks on their refrigerator. And the children are crying because they really think they're starving to death. They have no sense of being full. So they tend to be overweight as adults. If you inherit this gene from the dad, that's what you get, Prater Willie. If you get the same chromosome 15 abnormality, but you inherit it from your mom, you get a completely different syndrome. It's called Angelman syndrome. These children don't speak at all. They're completely nonverbal. They have spastic movements. That's why their arms are all in the air, because they flail their arms. They're sort of hyperactive. These are completely different disorders. But when geneticists went and studied them, they realized it's the same gene. It just depended which parent they got the gene from. The body interpreted the information differently depending on which parent they inherited it from. So that's called genomic imprinting. And again, you won't be tested on those disorders. Just know the definition. So it's where it matters which parent you inherit the gene from. So females have two X's. It turns out that only one of the X's in every cell is actually active in doing something. The other X, very early on in development, basically shrivels up and turns into something called a bar body. So even though, as an adult, all the girls in this room have two copies of the X in every cell, they technically only have one X working, just like the males in this room. So we don't make twice the amount of any of the, uh, of the stuff that the X chromosome makes, um, which is kind of interesting. That's probably one of the reasons why Turner syndrome doesn't have more effects than it does, because technically every female has one X go to sleep. So even though, apparently, that doesn't have, early on you need both X's. So Turner syndrome females do have issues. But since one X goes to sleep in everybody, the effects later on are not devastating. And remember Kleinfelter syndrome. Why do they pretty much look like normal guys? Because one X goes to sleep in, in, even in them. So they technically are XY, um, but with a few minor, minor problems. Now, the most obvious place that you're going to see this um, is, is basically, uh, the, or the best example of this is the calico cat. So let me show you the picture first, and then I'll put this slide back up. Here's what happens. So in a calico cat, the female is X big B, X little B, or whatever. She's got two copies. So at some point early on, one of the X's goes to sleep, and it's random which one it is. So in some of the cells, the one that stays awake is the one that codes for black fur. And every cell that comes from that cell from that point on will be black or make black. And in other cells, it's the one that codes for orange fur. So in the cat, that's why they're calico. Because depending on which X stayed awake in that early point, at this point in development, every cell that came from that one made that color fur. Apparently, there's a sex-linked disorder in women. Um, well, it's in, it's in everybody, but women that are heterozygous for it, where you don't have sweat glands. Women that are heterozygous for it have patches of skin with sweat glands and other patches of skin without sweat glands. Because depending which X went to sleep, they're going to have, um, 
some X's that are correct and some that are